Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Cooking Without Kidneys. I'm your host, Chef David Pollock, and today we're going south and do a little Tex-Mex. What we got today is we're gonna do a chipotle uh, beef for our tacos. We're gonna make a little tomatillo salsa, and the cool thing about tomatillos is they're not related to tomatoes. They're actually low in potassium and work really, really, really well in place of tomatoes for making salsas and things of that nature. So we're gonna use this and actually make a salsa verde, where we're gonna take them, clean them, sear them, and roast them. And finally, I got some grilled pineapple here. Of course, we're gonna do a grilled pineapple salsa, a little different, it'll be nice, light, and refreshing. That'll go really great with our tacos, our fresh queso fresco, and our fresh cilantro. So with that, let's begin. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna start with our taco meat, and then we're gonna go right into our tomatillos. Okay guys, so we're gonna start off with our beef. It's gonna take the longest to cook, and we really wanna simmer it down. Because we're using a 90-10 blend, there's not a lot of fat, there's not a lot of oil, so we're just gonna use a little bit of uh, canola oil in there. You know, just to keep it from sticking at our beef. And we're just gonna cook this down. So we're doing our beef first, just so that way it cooks all the way through. We don't overcook all the vegetables. We're just gonna let it brown a little bit. And as we add our chipotle, our liquid aminos, you know, it'll actually uh, simmer down really nice. So now that our beef is nice and brown, obviously it's not all the way cooked. There's still a little bit to cook. That's fine. We're going to start adding our veg. First things first, we're going to add our red onions, our garlic, of course, one bell pepper. Now I usually go on a ratio of one onion to two bell peppers. So I got half an onion here to one bell pepper for the one pound of beef. It just seems to come out more even that way. You can really start to smell how everything's starting to come together. And of course, our heat source. I'm using chipotles and adobo. Now, adobo is made with tomato paste. But the fact is, is we're not using an entire can. We're only using one or two chipotles that get that flavor into our food. We don't need a ton. Yeah, and even if you have jalapenos yourself, if you smoke them, you could actually make your own adobo, marinate them, put them in the fridge. They will last for a good while. Now we're going to add our cumin, our coriander. I have a little dry cilantro. You could use fresh too. And also I have a little bit of dry oregano mixed in with it. Add it all just like that. Only about maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of each. And as you saw, I didn't add any salt to this. And we're just gonna use what we've always used, and that's our Bragg's liquid amino. There we go, and the beef is almost done. Now while this is simmering, I'm gonna show you guys how to work with the tomatillos. All right guys, so we're gonna to start to work with our tomatillos over here. Now as you can see, they all come in a skin. We're gonna to have to take this off, and you'll feel that they're kind of sticky. We're gonna give them a good rinse. Now these are related to gooseberries. So like gooseberries, they're gonna be a lot more tart. So we wanna develop the flavor and convert some of that starch to sugar. So we're gonna get a hard sear and pop them into the oven. Okay, now you can feel that there's a little stick to them. We're just gonna give that a quick rinse just to get that off. And over here, I got a really nice RA super hot pan. A little splash of oil. Woo. And we're just going to get a nice hot sear. So as you can hear, that pan's nice and hot. Okay, the skin's starting to blister. That's what we want. We're going to take them straight and put them right into the 450 degree oven. So 
So these were 450 degrees for about 30 minutes. Now, as you can see, the skin's nice and char. I gave them a couple flips in there, okay? Got some really nice flavor out of them. So now we're going to take them over and add them to our blender. We're going to do this nice and hot so it emulsifies nice and well. A little bit of cumin and a little bit of smoked paprika. And I like to use rice wine vinegar. You could use a cider vinegar, but it really you want something a little bit on the sweet side that'll help to balance out that tart. I'm only going to use a couple of tablespoons. We're only doing three here. So as you can see, that's nice, thick, rich. All right, let's see how it tastes. Really nice. The smoked paprika just gives it this nice, like rounded edge. The tomatillos, you could definitely still taste the bitter, but the acid from the, and the sweet of the rice wine vinegar actually balances it out very, very well. Now let's go back and check on our beef. Okay, so let's check out on our beef. It smells delicious. As you can see, like the, it's still nice and moist. There's not a ton of liquid in it, so we don't have to worry about our tortillas getting too wet. Let's give it a taste. It's nice, it's earthy, it's delicious. You get that little bit of pop of spice from the chipotle and the liquid aminos gives it just enough salt that it balances out. Let's go make the pineapple salsa and we'll finish up this dish. Okay, we're, now we're gonna finish things up by making our pineapple salsa. Now this is a pineapple we've already broken down, okay? Pineapple is also, as I say a lot, low in potassium. So we could use this for a lot of things that we would normally use citrus for. And this will actually sweeten up the beef. So what we did was we quartered it and we took the core out. And now we're just gonna give it a quick dice. And right into the bowl we go. So we're using about half of this grilled pineapple here. The rest of it we can use to make a sauce later or something different. You can have a lot of fun with it. Okay, now to our pineapple, we're going to add half a red onion. Now we don't need the heat of like a jalapeno or anything of that nature, so here we got a little bit of poblano pepper, okay? It's not quite as hot. A little bit of garlic, because this is all raw and we're not using a ton of acid in it. A little bit of canola oil. And personally, I like sherry vinegar, okay? Um, it's nice, it's sweet. It's good stuff. And of course, for our salt. And a little bit of cilantro. Now we don't need much. We wanna make sure that we get all these big stems out of here. They tend to be woody. We're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes and then we're going to start plating our tacos. All right guys, now that we have everything set, let's plate up. So we wanna start, uh, me personally, I like beef on the bottom. I know some people like to make rice and add it too, but really with the tortillas, it's not necessary. These tortillas, I just popped them in the hot oven for a minute, just to warm them through so that they're nice and soft. Okay. Now I'm just making one full serving, three tortillas. So you guys can see it. Wish you guys could smell it. It's delicious, smells delicious over here. A little fresh pineapple. 
This is that's been sitting for about 15, 20 minutes. This is actually good overnight even, if you wanted to. And now we're just gonna add our salsa verde. We add a little smoked paprika, which is why we got the red color to it. But we also got that nice smoky flavor in there. We're not gonna need a lot. This is actually gonna carry through everything. I'm gonna finish with just a little bit of queso fresco. Queso fresco is a nice soft cheese, semi-soft. It's got a little brining, a little saltiness to it. And it's delicious. This is how I do my tacos when I was on dialysis. Mm. Delicious. Join me next for dessert. Hey guys, so welcome. And right now we're gonna start making our tres leches for dessert. It's one of my favorite desserts. It's a three milk cake, which means that it's going to have a combination of sweetened condensed, evaporated whole milk. We're going to top it with a little bit of whipped cream and we're going to start it off with butter. So this is actually a phosphorus dense recipe. So if your problem is phosphorus, if you can't keep that under control, then definitely consult your doctor before trying this. All right, so we're going to get started with our softened stick of butter. It's about a half a cup. Just gonna press it a little bit. And we're gonna cream in our sugar. As you can see, the butter still may be a little cold, but that's all right. We can get this cream together. Now, if you have, you could do this in a mixer. But when you're doing it by hand like this, you just wanna do a little sugar at a time. As you can see, it's all starting to incorporate. Now that we got our sugar creamed into it, we're gonna add our flour, and we're gonna add a teaspoon of the baking powder. That's gonna help it to rise. That's about a teaspoon. And just like with the sugar, we're gonna just take our time and incorporate the flour into this, and then we're gonna add our eggs. Okay, now that we have our cup of flour into this, we're gonna to start to slowly add our eggs one at a time, and I got five eggs here. and just slowly incorporate that. The one thing I love about this dessert is that it can be done very easily and left to sit. So if you've got an afternoon that you're like feeling up to it, it's a great thing to make. You can see how that dough is starting to really kind of come together. It's nice, it's going to be a really nice batter once it's all in. Now we're going to set this up on our grease sheet tray that we have right here. And for this, you can grease it with a couple of different things. Me personally, I like to use, you know, a very mild oil. I'm using here a little bit of canola. So we have our grease tray, okay? And we're just going to take our batter. And if you, if you have like a glass casserole dish, you could grease that and use that too. Okay, I personally like sheet trays because it's nice and thin. It'll only take about 10 minutes at uh, 350 to bake. I'm gonna spread this out nice and thin. The thinner we go, the, the quicker it'll cook. And because we have the baking powder in there, it should puff up nice. Now that we have it nice and spread out, we're gonna pop it into a 350 degree oven. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. Let's check it. Oh, look at that. There we go. Nice cook through. Okay, we're gonna poke a couple holes in it and set it to side to cool. This is gonna allow the three milks to actually soak into it. And as it sits, it'll puff up. As I said, these are our three milks that we're using here, sweet and condensed, evaporated, and also regular. And we're just gonna whisk them together. That's the sweet and condensed. You know, interesting fact, if you wanted to make a caramel for this, you could actually take cans of sweet and condensed milk 
and put them into, cover them with water on a stove and boil them for two hours. And you end up with a really nice dolce de leche. And you can use whole milk or cream, either one works. And of course, evaporated. We're just gonna whisk these together. Pour it right over top. Now we're just gonna set this aside and we're gonna let this soak in. We're gonna make our whipped cream that we're gonna to top this with. So we got about a cup of heavy cream here. And a little confectioner sugar. So we're doing a nice little Chantilly cream. We're just gonna whisk this till thick. And this is gonna be the topping. That milk's gonna to soak right into that cake. It's gonna become sweet, rich, and condensed. As you can see, most of the milk has been absorbed in. Had the whole cake starting to puff up and we're just gonna finish it. A little bit of fresh whipped cream right over top. We're just gonna spread it out. Nice and thin. And it's gonna to continue to sit here and soak in and we're just gonna stick this in the fridge and check it in a little bit. I've never been a baker, but this is actually one of the few desserts I actually can make well. Here we guys go, guys. This is our Tres Leches. It's a deliciously soaked three milk cake. Oh yeah. Just a small taste. Nice, thick, dense, the milk soaked in. Mm. Nice and sweet, delicious. Hey guys, thank you for joining us for another great day of Cooking Without Kidneys. We really enjoyed having you today here for Tres Leches and some tacos. Join us next time where we go to Far East Asia and try some of their barbecue. Have a great day, everybody.